right, before we get quick started with the uh, Amazing Grace Finger Picking for Beginners course, I want you to go ahead and download the study guide. Really important that you get that. It's free. There's no reason not to get it. All you have to do is click right here, and that'll take you to the download page to get the free study guide. And once you're there, this next video uh, is going to make a lot more sense. It's the quick start to the tutorial. We have a lot of videos over there, a lot of lessons. We're going to be covering how to change chords. We're going to be covering learning the finger picking pattern. We're going to learn tab over there, our refresher, refresher course with that, and a lot more. It's, it's for beginners. We're learning not only the song, but we're learning how to finger pick as well. So you're going to want to go ahead and get that study guide, and then you can continue with this video and take the course. So if you're ready for the quick start, here we go. All right, so on the next couple of pages, I have a more detailed approach to learning this song. But if you know how to read the tablature, you know uh, your G, C, and D chords, and um, you're familiar with the flow chart, or you could read the flow chart, this is really going to be very easy for you. There's only three chords in this song, and we're not using a regular G. We're going to be using a one-finger G chord. Uh, what you want to do, hopefully you've printed out this, uh, this sheet music here, page 12 and 13. And at the top of page 12, you could see that we have a measure that has six, that's the count off, that very first measure is the count off. And where it has the G chord um, on the top at measure two, that's where the song starts. Now if you're holding that G note down, okay, that chord right there, all you really have to know is what fingers are you plucking because um, the tablature is just, it's identical to the chord in this position. We're not changing notes. That chord is going along and we're, we're uh, you know, there's nothing really to think about. If you could play the chord, then all you really need to know is what strings you're plucking, okay, for this song. So on measure two, we have the G chord right here. And if you go to page 11, and you look at the right-handed, it says right-hand flow chart for G chord, waltz. It tells you the strings that we're plucking. And it says the same thing on the tablature. So on the flow chart, it says we're picking strings six. We're holding that G note down, just one string. Six, four, three, two, three, four. Okay, why don't you try that with me, okay? Six, four, three, two, three, four. If you could play that pattern, then you're pretty much going to be able to get this whole song if you could play the C chord and the D chord as well, because the G chord, the one finger G chord, is very easy. Six, four, three, two, three, four. Try it with me. I hope you have your guitar with you. Six, four, three, two, three, four. One thing that I like to, uh, the way that I think about this, this is an arpeggio that we're playing. We're not playing a chord necessarily, we're playing an arpeggiated chord, it's called, because we're playing individual notes out of the chord, and that's called an arpeggio. So what's interesting about this is, is we start going this direction, I call, I'll call it down, we start picking down, and then when we get to the second string, we come back up again with our right hand. Six, four, three, two, and then we're going back up. Three, four. So it's th also, it's thumb, thumb, index, middle, index, thumb. So if you go to page 12 here, that uh, G chord happens a lot in this song. If you've got this and you could play this pattern here, and don't worry, we're going we're gonna to get into practicing, practicing this in detail. Then you pretty much have this song. Uh, this song is going to be pretty easy for you as long as you know your C and your D chords. Okay? So measure number two is really the start of the song. It starts with amazing grace. And you don't want me singing. I don't want to ruin your day here or ruin the lesson or have you quit playing the guitar because I was singing. But uh, I'm going to accompany myself with uh, playing the melody. So 
and lead guitar along with the finger style to let us know where where we're going and everything uh, later on. So on measure two right here, you can see that measure two and measure three are identical, and it's all it is is. I'll call out the strings. This is the easiest way that I would know how to teach this. Six, four, three, two, three, four. Those are the strings we pluck. So we do that twice in a row, measures two and three. Six, four, three, two, three, four. Six, four, three, two, three, four. Okay? This is just the quick start. We're going to get into playing the song together, of course, but this is just to teach you the pattern. So we're basically playing, a good way to think about this is we're playing four notes going down and then two notes coming back up. One, two, three, four, and then coming back up. One, two, up this way, down this way. So down, 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 down. That would be the easiest way, if I had to visualize it, playing down and then coming back up again. All right? So two measures of the G chord. Then on measure four, we have the C chord. If you look at the um, page 11 on the flow chart, the only difference between the C, other than playing the C chord that you need to be able to play, the only difference is we're, we're starting a different string. We're starting the fifth string. This is... Five, four, three, two, three, four. So it's exactly like the G chord, okay, the G pattern. It's the same pattern, except we're just plucking one different string. Five, four, three, two, three, four. Why aren't we plucking six? Because it would sound like this. That's not the chord for the song. The chord is a C chord. Five, four, three, two, three, four. Try it with me. Five, four, three, two, three, four. Five, four, three, two, three, four. Okay, so that's measure four. Measure five is just the G chord again. Measure five, six, and seven is just the G chord again, the one fingered G chord. Measure five, measure six, measure seven. So why don't we do this? Let's just stay on the G chord. I just want to see how you're doing here. I wish I could see you doing this, but you could always write to me and tell me how you're doing with this. Here's a G chord right here, and we're just going to play this over and over again. G chord, one, one measure over and over again. Ready? One, two three, four. Let's go even slower. So for practice, you're going to want to go with every chord and look, either look at the flow chart or the sheet music. Uh, preferably, I would prefer you looking at the, uh, the sheet music with the tab. This is for the C chord. If you can do the G with your right hand, should be able to do the C because it's identical, but we're doing a starting on a different string. We're starting on the fifth string. Five, four, three, two, three, four. Five, four, three, two, three, four. Measure seven, I'm sorry, measure eight is the D chord. And on the tablature, if you're just forming that D chord, you don't even have to even look at what notes are being played there. You can if you want. Normally you would. But the D chord is playing all of the notes that you need, and you just need to know that there's six beats here. The pattern is identical, again, to the, D chord, uh, the C chord, 
except with the right hand, we're moving to another set of strings. We're starting on the fourth string rather than the fifth string. So it's the strings are four, three, two, one, two, three. Same thing like we did, same thing with the D chord. Only starting on the fourth string. So it's four, three, two, one, two, three. All right. Try that with me. Three, four, one, two, three. One and two and three and one and two and three and. I'm counting, obviously. Same thing. Thumb, thumb, index, middle, index, thumb. They're all exactly the same. Every chord is the same with the fingers, with what fingers we're playing with. All right, so in this measures 9 going into 10, this is the most difficult part of the song uh, because in order to play the notes that are on in the, in the sheet music here, we're going to have to uh, do something kind of odd here, okay, in order to get it. But hopefully this will all make sense to you. Now, if you notice on measure 9, I'm just going to go ahead and play measure 9. We have, um, this is the tabs, 0, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2. Now, what's interesting about this is, or not interesting, but what the fact is about this arpeggio, is our last note is two frets up on the third string. And on measure 10, our next note, we've got to get to almost very immediately, the very next note, we've got to get to this G note down here. So if we're going with this, this ring finger right here, okay, to play this, you could see that that's going to be difficult, or when we go to make that change, something's going to happen. See, that note is not open there. That last note is not open. We don't, in other words, we don't have enough time in between there to make a smooth change. So I'm going to show you a finger picking trick and a guitar trick that it's it's hopefully this is going to become very common to you and this is how classical guitar players, great guitar players um, make smooth changes is what they're able to do is they're able to get from the easiest and the best way to make a smooth sounding chord change is what we're looking for. Okay so in this regard this is our last note of the uh, measure nine, and we're going to need to use our middle finger here to make a smooth change. Now, let me just show you what I'm talking about. I'll do it real slow. Okay, so that sounded pretty smooth. So what I'm doing is I'm keeping this finger down, making it act as if it's almost an open note that it's ringing out. See what I'm doing? I'm holding that finger down a little longer. I'm taking my fingers off this D chord and keeping this one on here and moving my middle finger to the first, the uh, three frets up on the sixth string. And then by the time I have to do, you know, that next measure, which is all open notes, by the time it gets to that note again, I've got that's when I gotta take my finger off, okay? So you can see. I don't expect you to get that instantly. That's something that you may have to practice a little bit because what you're doing is you're taking that your middle finger and you're moving it all the way down here, okay? Then it's got to be off then. Right after you play this note, pluck this note, that's when to take this finger off. Sorry. 
See what I'm doing? So there's another way to do this, and I'm going to show If you're having difficulty with this, um, don't worry. I'm going to show you just how to change back. What will happen is the melody will change a little bit. But I'd like you to try this because that's one of the secrets to um, any good guitar playing is being able to use, play a note and change a chord and then make a smooth change. It's all about changing smoothly and keeping in time. Let's go to measure, and we're going to work on this some more. I'm just showing you the finer points of this, you know, the quick start here. Continuing on with measure 10, we have our middle finger three frets up on um, playing the G chord, the G note. And what we're going to want to do when it gets to a measure, measure 11 is we're going to want to uh, change back to playing this G note with our ring finger. And the reason is, is because measure 12 we have that C chord coming up and that's going to be easier if we're starting with the G chord to play the C chord in the next measure than, than pressing our middle finger than having to do this kind of move, okay? So this move right here is easier, you could see, with our ring finger than it is with our middle finger. Now, there was a very good reason why we needed that middle finger there for measure 10 but measure 11 you're going to want to change back. But it's very easy. Now I'm just going to play measure 10 and 11 back and forth and just I'm going to show you how easy this is just to change fingers in between chords because there's plenty enough time to do it. Okay, Let me try it here for you. So this is 10 and 11. I'm not just going to keep going back and forth between 10 and 11. And I'll start with our middle finger. that with me. It's very easy. Let me play really slow. You have plenty enough time to do it. And like I said, it's just for ease of operation. Now, uh, one, one very important aspect of any kind of guitar playing, and, I, and, I, and I've said this a bunch of times, you want to prepare yourself to where you have to go. And having the right fingering is going to make things easier with how to play particular chords and what fingers to use because we want to make it easy to be able to change from one chord to the next. And obviously if you were playing this right here, some, you know, somebody wrote into me and said it's easier for me to play it with my index finger, um, play that easy G chord, the one finger G chord. And I said, no, you really need to learn it with this uh, ring finger here because then when you advance and you want to play it to C, can you imagine starting from here and then having to go all the way here? That would be a very, very tough tough move. I mean it could be done. But there's too much movement. You want to limit your movement and make ease of operation, you know, back and forth. And that's why we went with this middle finger here from the D, just because that's easy to do. Okay, easier than this this note. That this a lot of problems are going to happen trying to do this holding this note down and then playing over here. I guess it can be done, but for me, the easiest way would be just to grab that middle finger and go like that, okay? So, um, measures 11 to 12, we've done that move already. And we did that in, let me look here. Same thing as measure three, between three and four. It's just that move. And the rest of the song is identical. We have that same move again where we have to use our middle finger off that D chord to keep that note ringing. And uh, switching back. And then the song repeats itself. Those two little dots at the, end of the, at the end of the song with that bar means that it repeats. And it goes back to the repeating bar, which is on bar two. And I hope that makes sense. 
practice the pattern, practice the pattern with each chord. And then practice that move going back and forth to the G chord. From the D to the G. Those would be the, the four things you should be practicing. And I will see you in the next video. I'm hoping that you're having some fun here.